Appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining us this morning for prayer. Again, go ahead, settle in, grab some coffee, make some tea, and then we'll get started and we'll pray together. In addition, why don't you go ahead and share this video, tag a friend, like it, throw a comment down there as well, but most importantly, share the video. Let's invite some other people to join us this morning to be a part of our prayer time, to be a part of fellowship with our God this morning. Well, church, as always, may our God gather us today. May our God gather us a scattered church. May our God unite us together and make us present to each other, even though we may be on phones, computers, tablets, whatever it may be. May God fill the gaps between us that we might be the church and present to our God and each other this morning. Amen. O oh Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Draw us into your love, Christ Jesus, and deliver us from your fear. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Lord, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born. To eternal life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm reading this morning is from Psalm 50. From the rising of the sun to where it sets, God the Lord God speaks, calling out to the earth. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines brightly. Our God is coming. He won't keep quiet. A devouring fire is before him. A storm rages all around him. God calls out to the skies above and to the earth in order to judge his people. Bring my faithful to me, those who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The skies proclaim his righteousness because God himself is a judge. Listen, my people, I will now speak. Israel, I will now testify against you. I am God, your God. I am not punishing you for your sacrifices or for your entirely burned offerings, which are always before me. I won't accept bulls from your house or goats from your corrals, because every forest animal already belongs to me, as do the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every mountain bird and every insect in the fields, they are mine. And if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you, because the whole world and everything in it belongs to me. Do I eat bull's meat? Do I drink goat's blood? Offer God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Fulfill the promises you made to the Most High. Cry out to me whenever you are in trouble. I will deliver you. Then you will honor me. But to the wicked, God says, Why do you talk about my laws? Why do you even mention my covenant? You hate discipline and you toss my words behind your back. You make friends with thieves whenever you see one. You spend your time with adulterers. You set your mouth free to do evil. Then harness your tongue to tell lies. You sit around talking about your own siblings. You find fault with the children of your very own mother. You've done these things and I've kept quiet. You thought I was just like you, but now I'm punishing you. I'm laying it all out right in front of your face. So consider this carefully, all you who forget God. Or I'll rip you to pieces with no one to deliver you. The one who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving is the one who honors me. And it is the one who... Charge the correct path that I will show divine salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. What a powerful word today. We hear this God, this beautiful language that everything belongs to our God and God wants our love and devotion. God doesn't want the rules. God doesn't want the form. God doesn't want 
for us to do the right thing, to talk about the right stuff. God wants us to love God with our absolutely whole hearts. What encouraging word today. We have the word of punishment, but let us hang on to that. The call to action is to love God with everything that we have. To commit our entire selves, our mind, our soul, our imagination, everything we have to our God and strive for what God would have for us. Not just keeping the rules, not just reading our Bible all the time we should or praying when we should or going to church when we should or watching the live stream when we should, right? Things like that. God says, I want you to do things like that because you love me. I want you to do them because you are seeking me out of a pure heart. Amen. Our gospel reading today is from Matthew 26, 69 to 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those just standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them, I don't know this man. He immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. This is the word of God for the people of God. And together we say, Amen. Amen. What a humbling experience. How often do you think that we, in our own way, have been in Peter's shoes? The way we act, the way we live, what we say, and what we do it is a resounding proclamation, I don't know him. It's a humbling thing to think about. It's a convicting thing to think. It comes well after our psalm reading that I'm sure there's times in our lives, moments even, where our actions have in essence proclaimed, I do not know this Christ. I do not know this person. The story goes on. I'm sure we'll be in our, our scripture readings the next few days, but Peter's offered redemption from this very act, and we'll touch base on that when we get to those scriptures. But for a moment, let us linger that we too, in this moment, might resonate well with Peter and see what God might be calling us to, a spirit of repentance or a, a turning our heart. As the psalmist said, to love God with everything that we have. Lord God Almighty, Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us in the to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our prayer of thanksgiving today, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace, for the hope of glory. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout the ages. Amen. Amen. And Almighty God, thank you that you have gathered us today. That you have filled the gaps between us. You've made us present to each other, even through social media today. Lord God, be with us. Draw us into yourself. Your scriptures have, have laid it out pretty clear before us, Lord God, that we are to love you with everything that we have. You are inviting us in to a relationship with you that we might love you with our whole hearts with every part of our being, Lord God. And yet, there we know, like Peter, the opposite is we know full well that we have failed in that in some way or another. That we've lived in a way that has just proclaimed to the world, this Christ does not live. At least in my life, this Christ does not live. That brings us to a place of confession this day, Lord God. We confess to you that that's probably been us at some point or another. But along the way that we've sinned against you or each other, potentially in some way or another. 
maybe the things we've said or the things we didn't say, the things we've done and maybe the things we haven't done, the things we've left undone. And again, just maybe we just haven't loved you with our whole heart, with everything that we have. Renew us this day, Lord God, forgive us our sins, restore us, and lead us the way everlasting. Lead us into relationship with you. Go before us, God, and call us to bigger and better things. Call us to a deeper relationship with you. We commit ourselves to the way of grace, the way of peace, Lord God, to embracing your gospel, knowing that you lead us. You call us forward. You forgive us. You make a way. Encourage us. Give us the strength to see and the wisdom to understand what to do as we live this world, Lord God. We've said it before so many times. The world needs Jesus, and yet what we're really saying is the world needs the church. The world has Jesus. Christ has been revealed. Now it is the church that goes out and is the presence of Christ in this world. So send us somewhere to God. Give us wisdom to see. Empower us to be the church in the world and to each other. Send us to each other in our faith community. That we might lift each other up in this time as when we're not gathering physically in a space, but we gather through media. Let's reach out to each other. Empower us to invite each other, to support each other in all the creative ways that technology offers. Oh God, I think of Pastor Todd as well as we're getting ready to meet this Sunday. Be with him, give him wisdom, give him direction, along with the other pastors on our district, Lord God, that they would find ways to meet, the ways that we can gather together, how we can navigate doing church in a time like this. You know, we like to say, Lord God, we, this is new to us, we don't know what we're doing, and yet pandemic, things like this, guys, is nothing new to your church. You've seen it before, you've been through it before with your church, and it's your church. So we commit it to you, that you would lead us, you would guide us, you would be our direction, almighty God, that you would send us. Lord God, this is my prayer. We pray in the name of Christ, we with you and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Church, thank you for being with us today. Again, click that like button, share this video, tag a friend. Let's move this video around social media. Let's gain some traction on inviting people in to being part of our church, part of our time together. In addition, don't forget, 10.30 this Sunday, we are going to gather as church together outside on the lawn. Uh, live worship is going to be there. It's going to be just like church. We're just going to be outside in the sun. So you do not want to miss that. Come on in and be a part of it. Bring your mask. You guys will stay six feet apart. It's going to be a great time together. I encourage you to be a part of that and find a friend. So church, thank you so much for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. May you go in the peace and power of our Christ this day. Amen.